book is about the, uh, the history of uh, psilocybin mushrooms, how they've been used around the world and different cultures for uh, entheogenic uh, psychedelic journeys. Um, uh, the book became of interest to me because I already had a big interest in medicinal mushrooms. I, I have a book called The Fungal Pharmacy that helps get me around the world and that's a big tome on mushrooms in general. Uh, but this, this specific mushroom interests me because it really has the um, possibilities of really helping people in clinical practice with uh, anxiety, depression, uh, post-traumatic stress, etc. And uh, there is a movement uh, in North America and Europe at the moment uh, to help decriminalize and legalize so that psychologists, psychiatrists, and others can use these in clinical practice for those, for those, con those type of conditions. I think there's two things. One is that Health Canada is, uh, by and large, uh, uh, has a bureaucracy of former big pharma uh, bureaucrats. And so there is that kind of stigma. Uh, the other is that for a long time, like for example with cannabis, I mean, back in the 60s, uh, you know, they would talk about things like reefer madness and there was all kinds of a spread of misinformation. And I think the same has been done uh, with magic mushrooms. Uh, with psilocybin mushrooms have been demonized in the media um, and by government and uh, it's time to put that to rest. It's not true. They actually are a very valuable medicine and we need to treat them that way. Um, really what happened back in the early 70s, uh, Richard Nixon uh, declared a war on drugs and they became part of that whole pattern. It, they didn't care what drug. I mean, so they classified them in the same breath as heroin or cocaine, uh, which is not anywhere near the truth. What is in interesting is that unlike some drugs, which could be taken for months or years, like antidepressants, mm -hmm. what they're finding is that sometimes a single episode, that is taking the mushroom, uh, uh, the psilocybin, one time, uh, can be enough to shift people's lives. So there's very few substances that do that. And so I, I believe that if we're going to be looking at an opportunity for a lot of people quickly to turn around uh, a lot of these uh, issues that are associated with trauma. And, and if I could say, you know, many, many people have suffered different types of trauma. And uh, people always say, well, people have addictions cause trauma. No, the other way around. Early traumas in life had led people to find ways to escape from that trauma, including addictions. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy that in, in Canada, uh, alcohol is legal. And yet, look at the harm it does. And so, uh, psilocybin is one of the safest medications you can take. It's very important that this become available because today, there are a number of young people who who do suffer traumas of different types, including right through COVID, um, who are microdosing. That is, they're taking about a tenth of a normal dose, and they're doing that on a daily basis. And I, don't, I think they'd be better off if they were in, under supervision and did a full dose, get the relief, get the, the, the shift in consciousness, rather than doing, trading one addiction for another addiction.